In this series, we're going to take a look at passive crop protection. How to maintain the highest possible temperature without any external energy inputs. For this video, we're going to compare a cloche um, with one layer of horticultural polythene and a greenhouse. The main difference being the cloche is lower to the ground with less surface area and the greenhouse is a much bigger structure. Later on in the series I'll take a look at things like um, thermal mass with water tanks, solar reflection ponds, double skin, triple skin and a range of other methods to try and um, increase the temperature. Well, I'll also take a look at uh, geothermal. If anybody's interested, let me know in the comments if you want me to test anything else out. So subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to be um, kept up to date with those. Okay, let's start with the cloche. It's a simple flat cloche on the real garden we're going to compare it with. It has a single layer of standard polythene, horticultural polythene that you can buy pretty much anywhere and the gap between uh, the polythene film and the ground is about 200 millimeters which is about 8 inches. Uh, we'll block the ends to stop uh, air just coming in and uh, cold air com coming under. The greenhouse is a much bigger structure it has uh, much more surface area and also a greater volume of air inside. Uh, the beds inside, the growing beds, are the same in the greenhouse as one row is outside. So it's, that's the, it's the same growing area. So you would need, uh, I think it's five cloches to equal the same cover as this greenhouse. Now the greenhouse has a lot more material in it than the cloches so this is a much more expensive structure than a, than a simple cloche uh, and it's, it doesn't have the ability to move like we do the cloches so it's worth bearing that in mind at this stage. Uh, I bought three data loggers. Uh, one will take the temperature outside um, one will take temperature in the cloche and one in the greenhouse so we can compare um, how both the cloche and the greenhouse compare to outside temperature. You can see today we've had a good hard frost. This is outside in an unprotected bed. And this is the uh, cloche setup. I've got nets over some of the cloches and polythene over, over others. We're going to do the test with the polythene, but this is under a netted one. You can see that um, there is a slight bit of uh, frost in the in the soil, just on the top, a few little bit frosty bits, but nowhere near as bad as uh, in the unprotected bed. And the, in the greenhouse, uh, we take a look in the greenhouse, And we have uh, protective um, cages in here for animals getting that seedlings and things. Uh, so inside them the pea seeds didn't seem too bad. Okay, let's have a look at the data. Uh, what we've got here is uh, a graph with uh, the cloche in green the greenhouse in blue and outside temperature in red. We started at 12 midday and we finished at 12 p.m. midday, uh, five days later. So it's most of a week actually here, a working week let's say. Um, and first off, if you notice that uh, the temperature in the greenhouse and the cloche jumped to 10 degrees, uh, whereas the temperature outside was constantly going down. We nearly got down to freezing uh, but the cloche and greenhouse hovered about that until uh, early morning in which the greenhouse, the cloche and outside temperature were all the same so you're not going to get any lower than that, that's your low point in temperature and both the greenhouse and cloche didn't protect from outside temperature. I would imagine if the temperatures was lower maybe hidden to negative territory 
uh, and quickly went down in negative it would hold like like it did here um, but overnight because there's no energy to keep any uh, keep the uh, add heat to the cloche or greenhouse then it slowly dissipates to outside and what you get is uh, both um, inside the greenhouse and outside same temp uh, next the next day though was uh, fairly bright with sunny spells and the cloche rocketed to about 27 degrees uh, at the peak. Uh, that, that peak at the top is about an hour. Um, the greenhouse w was way behind, uh, 20 degrees, full at least five degrees behind. Um, and the outside temperature never hit 10 degrees. Uh, again, through the night, the temperature in the both the greenhouse and cloche dropped to outside temperature and even the outside temperature accelerated away in the morning and the both of them lagged a little behind it. This is about one and a half degrees so it's not much uh, but for a, a short period, well a few hours actually, that's, uh, from about one in the morning until five in the morning it was warmer outside than it was in the dormer greenhouse. The reason for this would be it's dark, there's no energy to the outside temperature inc is increased because of a warm wind coming through uh, and then obviously ironically it plummeted off cold again uh, then the next day we get uh, a similar pattern both greenhouse and cloche similar temperature uh, the cloche outperformed uh, the greenhouse again on the second day and again on, on this fourth day and again on the fifth day uh, so it, it, it looks that the uh, cloche actually performs better than the greenhouse. Uh, the graph might look pretty impressive, um, but what we need to do is the make an average of the temperatures. And what I've done is, this is all the data here. And what I've done is, um, okay, I've averaged the temperature at the bottom here. Uh, this is the greenhouse. We had um, an average of 6.82 degrees centigrade. Uh, outside was 5.59 degrees centigrade and in the cloche was 7.66. So you can see that um, one skin of polythene on a cloche works better than it does in a greenhouse. Um, but it's not doesn't give a huge lift um, over the average temperature. Thanks for watching. Uh, next up, we'll be testing a hotbed in the greenhouse to see um, how long it stays hot for and what sort of temperatures we can expect out of that. So like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.